Hello, I'm Daisy Cousins. Welcome to This Week in Social Justice. This week's biggest and baddest social justice fails include Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden and his spat with a potential voter, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her rather desperate excuse as to why Bernie Sanders was thrashed in the Michigan primary, and depending on how long I feel like talking about the first two topics, we may even get time for a bonus topic. So let's get started. But while I have your attention, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I know by now you've probably watched one, two, three or four of my videos, but you haven't yet hit that subscribe button. Well, now is the perfect chance to do so. If you like my content and you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button right now. I would love to have you. Presidential hopeful and former Vice President Joe Biden, not so fondly known as Sleepy Joe, has been making quite a splash lately. He has swept through the recent Democrat primaries, picking up 14 states on Super Tuesday and Mini Tuesday. This all but quashes the hope of rival and Democratic Socialist comrade Bernie Sanders. Biden's result is impressive, especially given the fact that he is known not just for his decades in politics and experience as Barack Obama's right-hand man, but for his hilarious yet somewhat concerning behavior on the campaign trail. Joe Biden has fallen in, into a number of distinctly foot-in-mouth moments since he announced himself as a candidate, which includes stating that he is running for the United States Senate. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Identifying as a Democratic caucus. I was a Democratic caucus. And making an interesting value judgment on the issue of poverty, race, and intelligence. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. However, what has really pricked up the ears of the public recently is the tiff he had with an auto worker while campaigning in Michigan. These union workers that have been working countless hours under the Trump administration, I'd like you to explain how you plan to not only keep us working, but how you intend on getting the union vote when there is a large portion of the union workers that are gun enthusiasts and you are actively trying to diminish our Second Amendment right and take away our guns. You're forced. All right, thank now, you. Now, shush. Shush. Gosh, I support the Second Amendment. Second Amendment, just like right now, if you yell fire, that's not free speech. And from the very beginning, I have a shotgun, I have a 20 gauge, a 12 gauge, my son's hunt. Guess what? You're not allowed to own any weapon. I'm not taking your gun away at all. You need 100 rounds. So when you were in Beto, no, when you said you're going to take our guns, that I did what? not say that. That's you not true. I did not say that. It's a viral video. Well, it's a viral video like the other ones are putting out that are simply alive. Your, your voice, you said that you're taking the gun. Well, you're he just Beto. clarified Beto. it. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Take the AR, your AR-14s. Okay, this is not okay. Hold on, hold on. All right. Hey, let's you don't tell me to leave. I want to go outside. There's a lot of guys. A lot of guys want me, man. I'm not working. Hold on. Give me a break, man. Don't be such a horse with that. Hey, there's a lot of guys. Hey, hey, look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Are you, are you able to own a, a machine gun? I said, are you able to own one? I'm the law. That's right. So AR-15's illegal. How is that in the machine gun? No, it's not. Yeah, do you, do you need 100 rounds? Do you need 100 rounds? in America from handguns than there are what you call assault rifles. Why are you advocating for assault rifles when people are dying by handguns? Okay, so there are an awful lot of things that went on here. First, the auto worker is pretty articulate and respectful. He doesn't muscle in and he has his question written down for the sake of clarity. But instead of responding in kind, Biden has the rather disproportionate reaction of hurling an expletive, shushing a staffer, and launching into a rather inarticulate defense of his Second Amendment policies, although perhaps losing a tiny bit of credibility by incorrectly labeling AR-15s AR-14s. It seems Biden disputes the worker's accusation that he plans to take away people's guns, dismissing the viral video the worker refers to. So what was this viral video? Well, there were a couple, but this seems to be the one that they are talking about. This guy can change the face of what we're dealing with. 
with regard to guns, assault weapons, with regard to dealing with climate change. And I just want to warn and aim it. If I win, I'm coming for it. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. There have been a number of fact checks of that video from noted left-leaning outlets like PolitiFact who have decreed that this video does not, in fact, imply that Joe Biden is coming after American citizens' guns. According to PolitiFact, Biden says I'm coming for him, meaning veto, not them, meaning guns. PolitiFact also downplays the fact that Joe Biden, at a rally in Dallas, pulled veto on stage and said that if elected, he would be using veto to take care of the gun problem with him. I want to make something clear. I'm going to guarantee you this is not last year's seen of this guy. You're going to take care of the gun problem with me. You're going to be the one who leads this effort. I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. We need you badly. The state needs you. The country needs you. You're the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This certainly implies that Biden supports Beto's rather radical stance on guns, whether or not he has given Beto a formal invitation to join his team if elected, which Beto claims Biden has not. Nevertheless, Politico ruled that the assertion that the video of Joe and the O'Rourke's reveals Biden supports an Australia-style gun buyback scheme as pants on fire. Now, if you feel the PolitiFact's so-called fact-checking of the Biden Beto video was a little dubious, well, you're not alone. For my money, there seems to be just a bit too much reasonable doubt there about Biden potentially supporting Beto-esque gun confiscation for the claim to be ruled completely false and for Biden to be taken at face value when he insisted during his argument with the auto worker that he supports the Second Amendment. So, does Biden support gun buybacks or gun confiscation? Does he want to get rid of America's guns? And if so, did he therefore openly lie to voters via the auto worker, or at least only tell half the truth? Well, according to Biden's own words in the first Democrat debate on November 7th last year, he does, in fact, support some stringent gun policies, stating, Folks, look, and I would buy back assault weapons. We already started talking about that. We tried to get it done. I think it can be done, and it should be demanded that we do it. And that's a good expenditure of money. In addition, he had this to say in an interview with CNN's Anderson Cooper in August 2019. So to, to, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault weapon. The fact of the matter is they should be illegal, period. Look, the Second Amendment doesn't say you can't restrict the kinds of weapons people can own. You can't buy a bazooka. You can't have a flamethrower. The guys who make these arguments are the people who say the tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. We need the protection against the government. We need an F-15 for that. You need something well beyond whether or not you're going to have an assault weapon. So would you, how would you deal with all the assault weapons that are already out there that people have? What I would do is I would try to, I would institute a national buyback program. And I would move in the direction of making sure that that, in fact, was what we tried to do, get them off the street. But that's not yeah. confiscating people. No, that, that's not walking into their homes, knocking on their doors, going through their gun cabinets, etc. So people would be allowed to keep the weapons they already have. Right. Now, there's no legal way that I'm aware of that you could deny them the right if they had purchased, legally purchased them. But we can, in fact, make a major effort to get them off the street and out of the possession of people. So although Joe Biden may have got defensive in that confrontation with the auto worker and he may have denied the worker's allegation that he and Beto were going to take away the public's guns, it turns out that given Biden's previous comments, he does in fact support a Beto-style buyback scheme at least when it comes to AR-15s. Joe Biden lied outright to the auto worker and to the American public and whatever agenda PolitiFact and other outlets may have in fact-checking the claims made about the altercation has become painfully transparent. In short, it's Biden who is full of expletive, not the auto worker. Massive social justice fail to sleepy Joe Biden on this one. Speaking of Democratic presidential candidates, Bernie Sanders' supporter-in-chief, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is understandably a little bit morose at Bernie's sweeping failure during the Super Tuesday and Mini Tuesday Democratic primaries. Much of this loss is being attributed to a surprising lack of turnout by young voters aged 18 to 29 who overwhelmingly support Bernie Sanders. Anyway, true to form for those on the regressive left, Red Cortez has already started blaming everything except for Bernie's campaign for the less-than-pleasing result. 
The most recent scapegoat is, of all things, voter suppression. And you did a, a campaign event at the University of Michigan. It had 10,000 people. It was like a rock star status. Uh, but those kids did not show up, mm -hmm. at least if you look at the numbers. I mean, just overall, this, yeah. this race. Yeah. So, so how can you say the progressive position is still prevailing nationwide when Joe Biden is winning mm -hmm. so much? Well, I think one thing that we that isn't being talked about is the rampant voter suppression in this country. Right there in Ann Arbor, where we had that uh, rally, those kids were waiting three hours in line to vote in Michigan. And so when we talk about who's turning out and who's not turning out, we absolutely... So just to be clear, you're saying that you think voters didn't get to vote, they wanted to vote in Michigan? Absolutely. You know, obviously, there's also more that we need to do in terms of turning out youth voters. It's uh, we need to make sure that we're inspiring young people to turn out. But when you do turn out, you should not be waiting three, four, seven hours in order to vote. Now, the reason I am both astounded and amused at this allegation is because Red Cortez and those like her have relentlessly blamed voter suppression, among other things, for pretty much every Democratic defeat at the hands of Republicans over the past several years. The fact she is now blaming her own party for the same alleged offense indicates that this is simply one of her go-to deflections rather than a genuine concern or critique of the American voting system. But look, is she correct? Should we give her the benefit of the doubt? I mean, after all, since voting days in the USA seem to be midweek usually rather than on weekends or public holidays, it seems already unnecessarily difficult for people to get to the polls. But look at the raw numbers. Bernie Sanders didn't lose in Michigan by a few hundred or even a few thousand votes. He lost by about 260,000 votes, triple digits. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems to me highly unlikely that a 260,000 vote loss could be caused by voter suppression, particularly since this so-called voter suppression she is describing is simply people having to wait in line for a few hours and giving up because evidently other things are more important to them than risking life, limb and whatever job they have to get to than voting for Bernie Sanders. Particularly since in 2016 voters of the same demographic didn't seem to have that problem. Calling that voter suppression is drawing a very very long bow I would have thought. Rather than voter suppression being responsible for the lack of turnout from young voters, could it be, maybe, that in 2016, when more young people turned up, they just really hated Hillary Clinton so much that they would have done anything to get rid of her, whereas they're just kind of meh about Joe Biden? Could it be that, since the 18 to 29 year old bracket now consists of four years worth of Generation Z or Zoomers rather than just Millennials, could have something to do with it, considering that Gen Z, on average, tend to be less ragingly left-wing than Millennials, aside from a few noisy social justice warriors that suck up all the attention? I mean, who knows? Either way, blaming the Sanders loss on voter suppression would seem a desperate attempt to hide the fact that America at large is simply not interested in democratic socialism, or any kind of socialism for that matter. And since Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her supporters invest so much of their emotional selves into their politics and identify on a core level with their political beliefs rather than remaining detached, as a lot of conservatives tend to be, Admitting to themselves that maybe they're off the pulse somewhat would be a giant stab in the heart and undermine their entire identity. Massive, massive social justice fail to Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez on this one. Unfortunately, I've talked so long about the first two topics that we've run out of time for a bonus topic. But tune in next time, you might get lucky. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.